Okay. There we go. Now I'm unmuted. Congratulations, uh, Liam. Cool. So, as I was saying, um, you can hear me now. Perfect. Okay. Uh, any questions you have about tinnitus? Anything you want to know? Uh, I've got about 30 minutes before I have to do uh, another Zoom call one-on-one. So, uh, anything you want to know about tinnitus? Any questions you have? Uh, anything at all? Uh, you know, what is tinnitus? What causes it? How do you silence? What are the steps? What process do you do? What are the, what are the domino? Th- what's the domino theory? How do you get in contact with me? How to do one-on-ones with me? Best way to use the course? What type of fasting is the best? What does grounding do? What's the point of electrons? How does mitochondria function? What's the difference between RNA and DNA? What are intracellular organelles? What's the intracellular matrix? What's the extracellular matrix? What is the lymphatic system? How does it work? Why should you clear it out? What's a cold shock protein? What's a heat shock protein? What's an endotoxin, biotoxin? What's a parasite? Anything you want to know. Got the world's best tinnitus expert literally right now talking to you guys. So who's got a question about tinnitus? Okay. I've helped, I've helped everyone from single mothers to A-list celebrities. Rock stars, actors, musicians. <clears throat> Rosetta has a question about the lymphatic system. Yeah, you, you'll be able to find it. Remember, we had this discussion last time, Rosetta. It's in the silence course. If you fight, go to silence, you're bad login. Um, are tremors part of tinnitus? Not that I have it, but a lady in Texas, Houston, is suffering with tremors. Yeah, not really my forte. You lost the link, Rosetta. All right. I'll send it to you. Um, all right. So, uh, question about tremors. Um, yeah, it's not really, it's not really my forte, um, tremors. So, you know, if you know someone that has tremors, um, I'd probably send them to a neurologist, but yeah, it's, it's really not my thing. They, they could have, I don't know, mold toxicity, heavy metal toxicity. I mean, I had a, um, I had a private call with a lady yesterday um, who had uh, mercury fillings. She's 50 years old now from USA, and she's had mercury fillings since she was uh, at 10 years old. She had like five of them. And I said, you know, has any doctor ever told you to get them out? And she said, no. And I said, you need to find some new fucking doctors. Mercury is one of the most toxic substances on planet Earth, and it's in your mouth. Get it out. She has a whole host of issues from tinnitus to, you know, digestive problems, and migraines and, you know, headaches and somatic tinnitus. And... Can you do fasting with mold? Yeah, Kim, remember I, I answered that message yesterday. You can definitely do it with mold. Um, but the, the thing is I wouldn't do water fasting. I would do dry fasting. You can definitely do it for sure, but uh, definitely go for the dry fasting, 100%. But take it easy. And your place in Bali looks fantastic, by the way. Um, I miss that place. I might go back. Um, beginning of 2024. It's fantastic. You know, if you guys don't want to type, you can come on audio and you can just talk to me. We can talk right now. Usually I charge a lot of money for one-on-one calls. You can do it right now. Better come before. Yeah, you're leaving, aren't you? You're, you're, you're tired of Southeast Asia. I get it with the family. My fibromyalgia has flared up. Is that normal? I don't know. Um, I mean, I deal with tinnitus, not fibromyalgia. <clears throat> Any questions about tinnitus? Anything like that? Just let me know. I'd be happy to help. Anything at all. Don't be shy, guys. I know there's lots of people in here with uh, questions about tinnitus. You're feeling so much better. That's awesome. That's awesome, Kim. I like to hear that. Fantastic. Awesome. Any questions about 
tinnitus, anything like that, fasting, dietary supplements, grounding, replacements for certain supplements if you can't get access to them, gym workouts, ADP, ATP, mitochondrial function, electron chain process, copper, magnesium, phosphorus, manganese, chromium, anything like that, liver. Uh, black Spanish, is that just for mold? Yeah, I think it also helps to kill uh, candida as well. But uh, its main its main um, process is um, for mold. Yeah, I'm using it for something else, um, or I'm using something else. Um, herbs, so things like coriander, cilantro, rosehip, um, tea tree oil, eucalyptus oil. Uh, I find they work they work better. And also, if you if you take an oral supplement, it's really only going to get down to your stomach. Whereas if you take something, you know, you inhale it uh, through your nasal passageways. A lot of people who have a post nasal drip down the back of their throat, they have mold or parasites in their sinuses, and and the the um, the phlegm is trying to get rid of the mold or the parasite, but it can't. Then it's just going to keep dripping down and reinfecting your stomach. So there's not much point um, if you think you have a mold problem. You can take Spanish black radish. I mean, if you're bored a lot of it, go for it. It's no problem at all. But you should do an inhalation at the same time. For those of you who don't know what an inhalation is, it's when you get boiling water, you put, <clears throat> um, you know, those drops of the herbs that I told you about just before. You cover it with a tea towel. You open it up, close it, open up, close it, kind of like Indian smoke signals, and you just inhale it through a nasal passageways. You can do your mouth too. But uh, I find that nasal passageways uh, work the best. That's where all the good stuff is. That's where the mold loves to go in those sinuses. Remember, your sinuses aren't just here. They're around here, right? They're around here, under here, and above here. If you make a fist, it's, I have an exception, obviously, because I'm, I'm huge and my hand is big. But if you make a fist, especially if you're a woman, that's about how much space, like that area of your fist, that's about how much space is in your head. Um, of open space where your sinuses are. Um, I extracted three root canals three weeks ago. Amazing. How, with a, how was the infection? Did they have an infection, anything like that? Did they clear out the extraction site? Did they use ozone? Did they give you an antibiotic like amoxicillin? Did you avoid gentle mice? Let me know, man. Um, you plan to go for an implant. Which implant is good? Uh, your recommendation, please. Just get the implants that they screw in. Composite screw, and you can get. Um, oh, I was talking to someone about this just yesterday. Let me find the conversation. So you get you get the one where you. Um, oh, where is it? Here we go. It's this one. You know what? I'm just going to send it to you in the. Um, in the chat, had a tiny infection. Yeah, well, that, that tiny infection can uh, cause a lot of pernicious problems. There we go. There we go. Um, you love the lymphatic system module, pretty excited about it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it's a good module, that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll unlock the latest one in a couple of days. So you can get access to that. But yeah, before you start applying the dominoes, um, I found that a lot of people actually get, because I've been testing it behind the scenes for like a year now. And I find that people do get a better result. They do better when they um, clear the lymphatic system first. Because, you know, you can get rid of, it kind of goes like this, right? So and I've said this before when I say it again. Any good toxicologist, which I'm not, but any good toxicologist knows that if you want to cure a sick, per a sick person who's been poisoned of something, you have to first make sure they're not still being poisoned. So let's say you get bitten by a snake, right? You go to the doctor, you go to the ER, you got a snake bite, you got a spider bite, especially in Australia. The first thing they do is they go, okay, let's just, let's just suck the excess poison out of the, the, the wound of the site to make sure it's not still getting into the bloodstream. Because maybe like 20% of it's in the bloodstream and the rest is still being absorbed, so we get rid of that. Then we have to deal with what's in there, okay? It kind of works like this. So if you have a silver filling or you have uh, mold in your home or you have a root canal or you have uh, EMF 
or you have a toxic person in your life, let's just stick with the biological aspect rather than the social. But if you have something like daily, because, you know, I talk about aspect one and aspect two. Aspect one are the things that happened in your past that are no longer affecting you. So they could be things like, you know, sexual abuse when you were younger. It's not, I'm not uncommon for men and women. Uh, it can be things like um, uh, head trauma, a car accident, posture problems, things like that. Uh, it can be a toxic medication that you took. It can be things like, oh, I had an example just then. Um, da, da, da. It can be things like, um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. But it's, yeah, titanium is good, Lana. Use, use titanium. But it can be things like that, right? So things in your past are no longer affecting you. So you can go ahead and start fixing those things. So if you have toxic people in your life, you can kick them out. But then there's aspect two, okay, which are the things that you're doing daily, the daily things. Smoking cigarettes, eating toxic foods, using wireless headphones, um, spending time with toxic people, not getting enough sun, drinking a green, green smoothie in the morning like an idiot, um, not exercising, staying up too late, you know, watching the news every day and just believing that horse shit. Just t constant things that you're either doing that are biologically affecting you or emotionally affecting you, which kind of has a triple down biological effect anyway. The first thing you do is you get rid of the obvious things. That's the first thing you do. The second thing you do is go, okay, we've, we've stopped poisoning yourself, but there's still shit inside of you, whether it's emotional or it's an actual chemical or biological thing. Like you might've moved out of a moldy home that you lived in for five years or treated it, like had a professional treat it, but you still have the mold in your body. So you still have to get rid of that mold in your body. So but before we start attacking that mold in your body, you have to understand how the body deals with things like this. Okay, the immune system, sure, it plays its role. The white blood cell is going to come out of your bone marrow and attack it, yada, yada. You know how the whole thing goes. Everyone's done like, you know, rudimentary science in school, right? But what happens after that? What happens when the, the pathogens and the microbials and um, the parasites and the endotoxins and the biotoxins and the heavy metals and all that of the cellular debris and the mutated cells all get moved from inside of the cells, okay, or the groupings of cells into the extracellular matrix. Well, they're supposed to be moved into the lymphatic system where the lymph node will deal with it using macrophages and it will push it out via your sweat and get rid of it. Well, most people's, the, your diet, and when I say you, I mean most people, most people's diet has been so bad for so long and they've had so many toxins and so much shit in their body that the, their lymphatic system is completely and utterly but it doesn't even work anymore. It's just like, it's almost non-existent. It's not completely non-existent because you would have swelled up around this area here and you'd be dead, but it's practically non-existent, right? You've probably had a grandparent or your own parent, depending on how old you are, who's had to have a, a swollen lymph node removed from their body, right? That's what that is. It's full of microplastics and toxins that your body can't, just can't deal with. It's not functioning anymore. The lymphatic system isn't functioning. So what the first thing we have to do is when we remove all that shit from our environment, Okay, emotionally, socially, physically, and chemically, all those fun things can take a little bit of time. Then we have to deal with it in our body. But the first thing we have to do is deal with the lymphatic system, get that working. Okay, so um, Lucy was just talking about the um, uh, lymphatic system module. Go check that out. There's three videos. It's amazing. I tell a really good story about this uh, famous actress that I was helping who uh, was getting nowhere. And then I, you know, with, even with my advice, she had some other spiritual healers who were just like from Los Angeles who were just total fucking retards. And I said, look, we're going to do this now. We're doing this, okay? Because obviously that's not working, so we'll do this. If you followed my advice, cleared her lymphatic system, three months, her tonight was gone. Amazing. She had it for like, I think, a total of three years. She was basically suicidal. It was incredible. Good stuff. Not uncommon for average people and famous people. Same thing. doesn't matter. No one's special. You're all the same. So we clear out your lymphatic system and then we start doing things like cleanses and fasts and more grounding and exercise and sauna and cold temperature therapy and running and, you know, all these things. And then we keep going, keep going, keep going. We clean the water, get rid of the toothpaste with the bullshit in it and get rid of the processed foods. And it's harder for some people. It's easier for others. It depends where you live. Like you can go down to America and get bread from a natural health food store. And you can probably go and get the same brand of bread from Italy. And if they're made in Italy and one's made in America, they're going to be completely different. 
one of the reasons is because the one in Italy is probably going to have iodine. And in America, they've probably replaced the iodine with brominated flour, which is going to fuck your thyroid. Okay. Iodine, not a toxin. Bromine, fluoride, fluoride, chlorine, toxin. Okay, look at the periodic table of elements. Go look at the halogens. Go check out the work. Go, go read books by David Brownstein. It's fascinating stuff. It's hard to get sunlight these days in Holland. The weather here sucks. Yeah, I mean, it sucks. It is what it is. Go, go on a holiday. Um, and also hard to do grounding. Yeah, get a grounding map, my man. Get a grounding map. But you've been putting a lot. You've been putting in a lot of effort. So that's great. You know, if, if you can't get the sun, just take like fifteen thousand international units of vitamin D per day. Mix in some K two and some sodium. Ask your doctor first. My husband said, he should, "My husband said he loves your attitude." Well, thank you very much. That's that's appreciated. Tell your husband I said good day. Nice man, smart man too. By the sounds of it. Anyone who likes me is obviously very smart. <clears throat> Who's got more questions? Anything you want to know? Anything at all? Thoughts on vitamin D? Yeah, if you get enough, you know, you always want to get it naturally. Um, you know, for example, when someone says, oh, should I take a copper supplement? I say, no, just eat liver. You know, for example, or should I take a magnesium supplement? No, just eat liver. Because these supplement companies, you know, in America, that in, in the United States of America, there's a regulation where they only have to be within like 30% of what they say is on the label, which is crazy. Yeah, I mean, I've seen, I've seen the videos of where you are at the moment, Lucy. I think the weather's pretty good. So if you live in, you know, like a Scandinavian country and it's just awful, take the vitamin D. But if you can get it, you know, from the sky, from the sun, then do that. <laughs> But it's going to be harder for some people, like Aladdin's in Holland, as he said. So that's like, you know, what can you do? You know, if you're going to be outside, you know, you have to be, not only is it dark, but you're going to have to be covered up most of your skin and clothes because it's so cold. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons I live in Thailand right now. It's like, a, you can probably see in the reflection here outside my window, it's a beautiful sunny day. After this, I'm going for a motorbike ride and take a break from work. Very excited. And then back to more work. Any questions? Who's got questions? Anything you want to know about tonight? Now's the time. Anything at all? Thing is killing me. But yeah, I've I've um, I've been making a completely new website. So you know, I used to have just a one-page website. Now it's like a huge, big website with like ten different pages. So all my podcasts, there's a survey, all my videos, and everything. You know, you'll be able to go there and find everything. You can find a story on my life. You can find shareable links. Um, there's going to be a huge page of all the testimonials, all nicely done navigation. It's being done now. So, you know, you get a chance to, um, see all that great stuff and, you know, share it with a friend if you want to, it's up to you. Everything's in there. Cool stuff. So if we don't have any more questions, then I shall take my leave, but this is being recorded so you can watch the recording. Um, after this. And I'm, um, I'm going on a podcast tomorrow um, with uh, some, uh, a girl who I know who runs a carnivore YouTube channel. And then after that, in a couple of weeks or something, I'm going on another podcast with, with um, quite a big podcaster who's had like John F. Kennedy and um, who's that guy who... It talks about like, you know, your genetics and your genetics are programmed. Bruce Lipton, you know, he's had Bruce Lipton on the show. So I'm going to go on there and talk about tinnitus and explain why it's not for life. And yeah, it's pretty easy to fix when you know how, but it's easier said than done. <clears throat> and I'm going to make the theme of the podcast, I think, um, that silence is subtractive. And I've said that before, and I'm sure most of you have heard me say that. 
But it's true, silence is subtractive because how many times when someone gets sick, you know, or someone has a problem, or it's, if it's emotional pain, financial pain, it's a sickness, like whatever it is. And people think like, what do I add in? What do I have to add to my life? My knee hurts, what do I put in my mouth? You know, my finances are fucked. What, wh who should I give more money to? And all they have to do, if your knee hurts, you have to realize what you're doing in, and you're already putting in your mouth, it's causing problems. Most of the time it's oxalate. Like if you have arthritis, there's, there's, a, there's a huge amount of research coming out now. And Sally K. Norton shares it all the time about um, oxalate-induced arthritis. In fact, there's a lot of research coming out now about nerve problems, neuropathy, and even tinnitus. It's called oxalate-induced polyradiculopathy. I'll say that again. Oxalate-induced polyradiculopathy, which is when the, the root of a nerve becomes inflamed and it can become inflamed by oxalate. Again, oxalate is in plants. If you consume oxalic acid, which is in plants, it binds with calcium to create insoluble crystals, which have an affinity for joints in your hands, knees, neck, and TMJ joints, okay? I can't tell you the amount of, like, like if, you, if you guys go through my Instagram, my YouTube channel, there is an answer for everything. And I mean everything. You know, with, with slight exceptions, when you go on my course, there's extra stuff there, of course, you know, but most things are there, pretty much everything. And the amount of people that come to me who say, you know, Liam, I've got TMJ, um, temporal mandibular joint dysfunction here, you know, huh? there. Uh, what kind of exercises should I do? And I'm just like, there it is again. You keep thinking you have to add something in. You don't. You don't have to add something in. You have to take something out. You have to take something out. It's like when someone has a headache, they go, oh, I should take a Panadol. What, do you have a headache because you have a fucking Panadol deficiency? How does that make any sense? It's obviously something you've been doing. So you haven't drunk enough water, you haven't eaten properly, you haven't slept properly. Why take a Panadol? Just fix your fucking life. Otherwise, it will just keep happening. And, you know, do you really want to be taking that shit? No. So I tell these people, I say, no, you have temporal mandibular joint dysfunction, and I say to them, first of all, you know, did you have any blood force trauma recently? Did you get punched in the face? Did you fall over and smack your head? You know, that's, they don't know. I didn't get that. Okay, well, it's oxalate. And they go, oh, that's the biggest load of bullshit I've ever heard. You're a fucking scammer. You're going to say, okay, well, have fun. And they always come back to me in like four to six months. And they go, you know what, Liam? I, I thought you were a fucking idiot and a scammer and blah, blah, blah. But then I cut out my green smoothies and I cut out my tea. And not only is my TMJ gone, but I can move my hands better now. Because you rinse the oxalate out from your joints. Because you listen to what I say. You listen to the person who has the most testimonials on planet fucking Earth when it comes to tinnitus. Uh, probably not TMJ, but tinnitus. Hypercuses, polystyle, tinnitus, vertigo. And now, a lot of cases are fixing visual snow and hearing loss. So I think it might warrant people to not warrant, but it would do them well to go, you know what, maybe I'll listen to what this guy says. Because all those doctors with those qualifications framed in mahogany are trying to charge you $5,000 for risky surgery, irreversible surgery, or for habituation, which is like, come on, like what, what even is that? I look at habituation like this. If I have a stone in my shoe and I go to a doctor and I say, my foot hurts. And he goes, there's a stone in your shoe. And I go, well, can you take it out for me? He goes, no, but I'll charge you $6,000 to learn to live with that stone in your shoe. I would say, go fuck yourself. It's the same thing. Obviously, these doctors don't know how to fix tinnitus because why would, um, you know, medical institutions, which are funded by the most powerful companies on planet Earth, pharmaceutical companies, why would they ever teach their doctors to fix people naturally, like to take things out of their life. No, no, no. They want you to put things in. They want to sell you the creams and lotions and potions and surgeries and therapies and more, 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 more. And the best thing about that with habituation is that you've got to keep coming back. More money, repeat business, baby. That's what they want. Why the fuck would a medical school ever teach a fucking doctor to tell their patient to, to be properly healthy? Are you smoking crack? They would never do that. 
That's why it's, it's so ridiculous when, when someone says to me, oh, Liam, well, if your advice worked, then every doctor will be talking about it. You know, and I say to these people, <clears throat> I say, you know, do you like fantasy? And I say, and they go, yeah, sure, I guess. And they go, it's, it's, I thought you did because, you know, uh, the, lion, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, right? <clears throat> they go, yeah, yeah. So they've got posters of that, that movie. And they've got Aslan and the kids, and they've got the white witch of the whatever. And then if you look right in the corner, there's a picture of you because you're living in a fucking fantasy, you idiot. To think that the medical industry has any fucking gives a fuck about actually fixing people is insane. It's crazy. The people on tonight's forums who say, oh, well, I won't listen to Liam's advice because I'm going to wait for a doctor to come through who's going to find a cure and they're going to get this special electric treatment and they're going to do all this amazing stuff and then I'm going to do that. And I say, okay, who's going to fund that? Fund that. Oh, well, it's going to be some sort of company or some benefactor. Okay, what does that company want? Well, they, they obviously, you know, they want to make money. And I say, okay, what causes tinnitus? And they go, well, I don't know. And I say, that's interesting because I do. And a lot of these companies also, they probably have a pretty good idea too. And they know that it's so many different things. These companies need to do research and fund research that finds them a patentable product, something they can copyright that no one else can have. A pill, a powder, a potion, a treatment, a therapy, a surgery. Those are patentable. What I do isn't patentable. So they're going to keep... We know there's so many different causes of tinnitus. Stress, mold, posture problems, uh, where you live, uh, dietary problems, allergies, parasites, mold, root canals. The list goes on. They all have a negative impact upon mitochondrial function, which has a trickle down, which eventually causes, exacerbates, and prolongs tinnitus. That's what it is. I've shown it. It's so fucking clear. These companies, how can, how can you take a single pill that can get rid of mold, stressful people from your life, fix your posture, and so on? You can't. These companies have realized, they have started to realize, there's no fucking patentable process of fixing tinnitus. So these dumb fucks on these forums who are saying, you know, we just have to wait for... These, you know, it's it, like, is this fucking Helm's Deep in Lord of the Rings when you're just waiting for Gandalf to come over the mountain with the, you know, the guys on the horses? You're crazy. You're not living in the real world. The real world is nasty. It's mean. It's violent. You know, it's, it's just, fuck, I just wonder how these people forget, you know, don't forget to breathe. I mean, holy shit. Anyway. Who has some questions? Uh, should people with tinnitus eat brains? Yeah, go for it. It's one of the healthiest foods on the planet. Um, things like uh, pancreas, thymus, thyroid, liver, heart, lung, brain. Eat it. Go for it. Brain's good. Brain tastes good, actually. Brain soup. Uh, do you recommend colonics in your course? Yeah, if you're going to do a gallbladder cleanse, you need to do a colonic to clear out the colon. Otherwise, um, gallstones get caught in the colon and cause a you know, big problem, actually. Uh, maybe so, maybe so-and-so is having a flare-up. Is she just oxalate dumping? Yeah, so you have to, when, you, when you're, if, you, if, if you're like this, if you're a, a vegan and you've been having, you know, nothing but plants for six years, it's very unsafe to just start eating nothing but meat. It's, I don't think it's a, a safe idea. You need to slowly transition off of it. Because if you just eat nothing, the only way that I know, um, and Sally K. Norton and people like Lowox Grandma on Instagram have spoken about this, the only way that I know of getting oxalate out of the body is to stop eating them. And then for whatever reason, when you're still eating oxalate, your body doesn't get rid of them. I don't know why. But when you stop eating them, um, Sally K. Norton has shown that your body starts pushing them out. Again, where does your body push them out? Out of the skin. The lymphatic system doing what it's supposed to do. Imagine how much the lymphatic system of a vegan struggles pushing out insoluble crystals out of the lymphatic system. Could you fucking imagine doing that? 
It's crazy. It's not supposed to be in the body. These, you know, plants, they're great medicine. They're great for herbs. They're great for cleansing. They're great at killing mold and parasites. And you can use them as binders and things like that. And they'll prevent you from starving if you live in a third world country. But if you have the choice, make the right one. Treat plants as medicine, not as food. Uh, yeah, treat, treat plants as medicine, not as food. And meat is also, meat has medicinal purposes too. I mean, the concentration of um, minerals and, and uh, nutrients in uh, animal organs is higher than anywhere else. Now, these vegans will tell you, and I don't want to start a whole competition, but I mean, when you're an idiot, you're a fucking idiot. These vegans will tell you, oh, well, you know, the, they'll show you a graph. Like, they'll be like, oh, steak has, you know, this many milligrams of magnesium. The macadamia nut has even more. It's like, yeah, but you'd have to eat 100 macadamia nuts. And also, the um, cellular wall of um, a plant cell surrounded by fiber actually prevents the human body from breaking it down. So you just poo it out, which is why people who have constipation sometimes take fiber, like Metamucil or whatever, so they can take a shit because they're not digesting it. It's just going straight through them. So you're not even getting, it's like, it's just, and th these are doctors saying this. These are doctors saying this to people who pay them money and they're like, oh, I'm sick. What do I do? It's like, I don't fucking know. Eat some berries. <laughs> what the fuck? Holy shit. Especially, I can't imagine how pissed off you'd be if you're in the NHS in the United Kingdom and you waited six months for some doctor to say, fuck you, eat a banana. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. I worked out... <clears throat> I worked out last night. You cannot cook out salicylates. No, you can't. Um, I got a big spike, spike from capsicum. Yeah, well, capsicum is a nightshade, too. It's like the worst vegetable you can choose. I just wanted to add it, but that was a big no-no. Yeah, look, I mean... No one has to go carnivore to get silence. And I don't like these, you know, these labels like, oh, I'm carnivore, I'm keto, I'm vegan, I'm pescatarian. No, you're a fucking dork. Like, if you're going to shape your personality around what you eat, you need fucking therapy. It's crazy. It's the same. So I just tell people, you know, just slowly make a transition towards eating more meat, less carbohydrates, less plants, probably no nuts and no seeds because what's the fucking point? And just wherever you manage to get silence. And remember, this course is not just about what you eat. It's much more than that. It's about who you interact with. It's, it's are you happy in your job? It's, you know, I said this on the last live stream and I'll say it again because it's so important. <laughs> Excuse me. But, you know, one of the biggest problems that I have with this course is getting people to actually follow the advice. Sorry, so of water. And, uh, you know, I've had instances where people will say, I've been following the course for a year and nothing happened. And I was like, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Look, let's talk. And then you talk to them and they like break down crying and they're like, yeah, I lied. Like I hadn't done a fucking thing. It's like, well, thanks for saying that on the internet. That's, help that's really helpful for my reputation, you dick, but whatever. People are people. It is what it is. And you come to find that they still drink every day or every other day and they still drink coffee and they still have sugar. And it's sad because you go into their life and you realize that without those things, they have nothing because they hate their fucking lives. They hate their job. They hate their spouse or they're single and they're lonely. They play video games. You know, they're overweight. They just hate their fucking lives. And so to tell those people to quit alcohol and, and painkillers and, you know, go socialize more, it's hard, you know, so I've kind of realized that, you know, in the course update, you'll see it, uh, you will, you will have started seeing it. I, I'm focusing more on, you know, go out there, be more social, be, be happy with yourself, go socialize, go make an impact on society. Like I, I sponsor some village kids in Thailand and pay for them to go play rugby around Thailand. It's like the best feeling ever. It's amazing. You gotta, you gotta, you know, I think karma is real and I think that you have to give before you receive. I mean, this is one of the reasons why, when I got silence, I could, you know, make the choice to just go, you know, I didn't even want to fucking hear the word tinnitus again. 
I spent four years of tinnitus and hyperacusis, like as a drug addict, just trying to, it, it, again, it's like, there it is. Like when you, when you're unhappy with your life, you turn to drugs and alcohol. And, um, you know, the only thing that got me to stop was basically being like, it's either silence or suicide anyway. So, you know, what was I going to say? Yeah. Karma. So when I got silence, I thought, well, I would love to just go off and just, you know, I've got a job lined up. I can just go work that and whatever and just live my life and would not deal with the bullshit of tinnitus. But then I realized, you know, it's kind of selfish. No, like I looked around and, you know, back, this was back five years ago now. And back then there was nothing. There still is nothing. It's still dog shit. It's just like me and like, Julian Cohen Hill does a great job emotionally supporting people. And then everyone else is just like, I don't fucking know, just like, again, they're in Narnia. They're just like, habituation is the only thing you can do. You have to learn to live with it. It's like, dude, put the straight jacket on and just go to the moon. Just go to the moon. Okay. Nobody wants you here. And um, I decided, you know, I'm going to help people. And, you know, I think karma is real. So ever since I started helping people, I got an amazing life. And I get to talk to you guys. I get to help you guys. I live in Thailand great. It's amazing. So, you know, that's why part of the course now is actually helping you guys with your lives. I'm not, I'm not some life coach or that. I hate that word. I think it's stupid. I never want to be that, but, um, I think it's important to help people. I really do. And instead of telling people to quit alcohol and quit coffee, it's like, you know, ask them why they drink it because it's just a drug. You know, you'll, you'll, Someone will say, like, you know, you, you'll ask someone, like, oh, why do you drink coffee in the morning? And they'll go, like, oh, I need, like, a bit of energy. And it's like, no, why do you really drink it? And they'll be like, because I hate my fucking job. I don't drink coffee in the morning. I love my fucking life. I don't want to wake up and take a – I've tried coffee every now and again. Don't get me wrong. I love the taste. When I drink it, I have a freaking panic attack, an anxiety attack. It's a very strong drug. It's horrific. Why do I drink that shit? Same with alcohol. Why do you need to come home from work and go, whew, I need a stiff drink. It's like you hate your life. Why did you come home? Why do you feel worse at the end of the day? Because your boss bitches you out. Your kids don't respect you. You make a shit amount of money. You fucking, you can't hold your promises to yourself. You always cheat on your diet or whatever you're doing. You know, you didn't go talk to the girl or guy that you liked and you're going to drink the coffee. You know what I mean? Are you going to come home and do the alcohol? Are you going to pop those pills or the Xanax that you haven't needed for two years, but you go and tell your psychiatrist you do need, but not for your anxiety because you hate your fucking life. And that's what it is. And you don't realize they're autotoxic. And then all of a sudden you get tinnitus and you come and say to me, I don't know where it came from. And I, I go, it came from the fact that you're very unhappy. That's where it comes from. It's very, it's very sad to see. And, you know, that's, I like helping people, so that's what we're here for. <clears throat> okay, well, um, I think we'll end it here. I'm going to put this uh, video on the internet so people can see it, and I'll save it in the group, um, obviously, here. I'm going to do another one, because, again, you guys are paying to be here. And, uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions... Uh, you know where to find me. Talk soon. Talk soon.